Here I've got three glass jars, all full of glass beads, and the glass beads are all different sizes. The mass, the weight of all these jars is exactly the same. The only difference is the size of the beads. So I've got 0.4 mil, one mil, and two mil. And now I'm just gonna turn the lights off so you can see it better. I've got a laser pointer here. If I shine this into the beads, you can see that a little bit of light comes out. Remember, this is the larger glass beads. Now if I move to the medium sized glass beads, you'll see that some light comes out, but it's a little bit fainter. And then finally, the smallest glass beads doesn't let out any light at all. Why is this? So what's happening here is the light is being scattered more efficiently by the smaller beads. And because there's more of them, the light is completely scattered before it can reach the edge of the glass jar. Whereas in this one, the light scatters less efficiently and it's coming more directly through the beads and out of the glass. There's a fundamental relationship between the size of the particle and the wavelength of light that's hitting it. The efficiency of the scattering will change based on the size of the particle and the wavelength of the light. So this is why the smaller beads here scattered light more efficiently. This also happens elsewhere in the universe. So in our atmosphere, it's mostly comprised of nitrogen and oxygen, which is N2 and O2. And then we have the sunlight coming through, which as you know is actually made up of the full spectrum of wavelengths. It's the full color spectrum that we see. So in the atmosphere, it just so happens that the N2 and O2 molecules are the right size so that the blue wavelengths of light and the violet wavelengths of light are scattered the most. So this is why the sky is blue. So because the atmosphere scatters more blue light because of the nitrogen and oxygen present within it, uh, this is the reason why sunsets are red, because as the, the, the sun goes down, the sunlight is traveling through more and more of the atmosphere. So what happens is the atmosphere has scattered out all the blue light contained within sunlight, and only the red light and the yellow light remains, which are scattered less efficiently by the nitrogen and the oxygen within the atmosphere. Aerosols are small particles suspended in the atmosphere. Examples of these are dust, smoke, sea spray, Aerosols in the atmosphere can impact the climate on the Earth. The way they do this is in two ways, direct and indirect. In the direct way, it's aerosols just suspended in the atmosphere and they can scatter light back. For example, dust particles, they're a type of aerosol. You can imagine looking down on the Earth and if there's a huge plume of dust, for example, over the Sahara, which blows over the ocean, the dust is more reflective than the ocean below. So what happens is the sunlight is reflected back into space and this acts to reduce the amount of energy coming into the planet and can cool the earth. So the way that aerosols can indirectly impact the climate is by acting as seeds for cloud droplets. Now, water molecules actually don't want to stick together by themselves. They find it very hard to do that because there isn't much of a bonding strength between them. It's much easier for the water molecules to condense onto a larger particle, such as an aerosol. This is because the surface is a lot less curved and so there's more bonding strength because there's more directions for it to bond with. If there's a higher concentration of aerosols in the atmosphere, then you get clouds with a lot more droplets, but they're a lot smaller. And if you have that situation, then the cloud will scatter light a lot more efficiently and it scatters it back to space. So the same situation as the dust bloom, you'll get the clouds being more reflective and sunlight is bounced back into space. There are some scientists who suggest we could use this to combat climate change by introducing aerosols into the atmosphere so that clouds are, have smaller droplets and more of them and are more reflective and therefore reflect more sunlight back into space, thus cooling the planet. But there are still some large questions over this idea. We don't really know all the implications of introducing aerosols into the atmosphere and there may be some unintended consequences that we haven't foreseen. 